live from the FIA Barcelona Gran Via Conference Center in Barcelona, Spain. It's The Cube at HP Discover Barcelona 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, HP. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Barcelona. This is theCUBE for HP Discover 2014 in Europe, their European customer show. This is the Barcelona of last year, Vegas. Yes, you're a regular now. I am. Welcome That's back. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so we um, we had um, Seamus on yesterday. Um, great guest. He's, we love his accent. He's just also dynamic. <laughs> but he, he was very, you know, he had a spring in his step. Business is good. Very good. Um, and so you know, we were, he launched on the cube when they had no revenue. Now you're doing billions of dollars in revenue. He's all so happy. So service is a key, but networking is a big, big world theory. Obviously with. Uh, you know, NFV with network virtualization, we saw even going back to the shop heard around the world when VMware bought this era. You know, OpenFlow was out, you guys had some shipping products with some of the first yes. ports on OpenFlow back in the day. Um, now, we're a few years down the road. Where are we? What's going on with the networking stuff? What are some of the, the, the pain points with customers and what are you guys working on? Yeah, uh, so great to be back. Thank you for inviting me. So, um, I think uh, clearly, from, a, from an HP perspective, software-defined networking has been a big investment area for us, big a strategic area of investment. And um, yeah, customers have really, I guess, kicked the tires around uh, SDN for a while. There are a number of different solutions available on the market, and it's a big, it's a big transition going from a traditional, um, very static network to something that's very new and, um, and dynamic. Um, so we're now actually getting to the point where customers are, uh, are starting to implement software-defined networking, uh, which is which is great. And of course, the support experience that we have to provide them is quite different to a, uh, to a static network, where really you know, we've been providing uh, remediation support on a device. With SDN, uh, we're having to support the full uh, infrastructure. Um, it's really a, a system that we're supporting. So it's the devices, the control layer, and the application layer, so the uh, yeah, the experience is very different, and um, it's uh, you know, it's uh, it's very important that we uh, that we get that experience right because it's a key component of uh, of SDN. Can you can you describe in some more detail the difference, sort of the static versus dynamic? You talk about the service the experience. You're, you're supporting many more layers. Can you just double click on that a little bit and help us understand? And a little bit more, add a little bit more color to that. Sure, sure, absolutely. So, uh, in terms of the traditional network, I mean, very uh, typically, the customer would have, uh, you know, an administrator that would do a lot of the manual activities, a lot of the of the of the work to really program the network. Very manual, very transactional, very slow, actually. And with uh, with an SDN network, clearly, we're automating many of the uh, many of the tasks. Um, and, and, and really, the requirements that, uh, that, that the network admin had of a, of a support provider like HP was really just turn up when the when the device fails. Um, in terms of what we're doing now with SDN, there's far more um, um, uh, requirements to, to really fully understand the integrated stack. So, um, you're really understanding how these components are interoperating, um, and you know if there is a, a, an issue or a problem. You know, we have to have the ability to really drill down and identify you know, the root cause very, uh, you know, very quickly. So I would say, the, yeah, you're right, the stack is far more complex, but our role really is to hide the seams uh, for the customer um, and ensure that uh, you know, they're getting the reliability really that they require. Uh, in the, uh, in the when you go around, Alistair, and talk to customers, what are you seeing in terms of uh, SDN adoption? I wonder if you could frame it in terms of sort of those that are really hardcore going for it, those that are showing interest, and those are sort of, you know, not really there yet. What, what's the what's the market telling you? What's it look like right now in terms of the maturity model? So I would say all all, all customers are certainly interested in and uh, looking at it. You know, it's now a reality. I think for you know for a number of years it was a theory, and, and, yeah. and now it's a reality. I mean, you can go on our app store, and there are. In fact, I was on the app store last night. 
you know, we have many different uh, apps now that you can apply to an SDN network. Um, so yeah, you know, I think people appreciate that in order to get to this you know, vision of a software-defined infrastructure, software-defined data center, the network really is probably the, the laggard of, of, uh, of all of the technology domains that we, uh, that we have. And um, um, yeah, for me, you know, customers are really now starting to look at well, where, where can we really start? Where's the, where's the right inflection point for us to start to, uh, to implement SDN? Um, so I, I would say, you know, typically based on my experience, um, applications like Link, so in the collaboration space, that's really where we've got something very tangible. You, know, you, can, you can really, really see the difference that uh, an SDN-enabled network uh, makes using something like Link, um, yeah, where, uh, where you can you know, dynamically program the network to cope with the, the various traffic patterns. Uh, I mean, we use that you know, exclusively in HP. We're a big link, probably the biggest link user um, mm. of, uh, of any enterprise. And, uh, and actually, the, you know, the productivity and business value that it generates is, is, uh, is significant. And um, so I think that's, yeah, that's the area that most, uh, most And is that how customers are looking at it? They're sort of looking across their application portfolio and saying, all right, where does this apply? And then let's attack that, as opposed to trying to do a a big overhaul, and, 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 and is that a feasible way to approach it, or, or is it, or is SDN more of a whole house decision? I, I, I think it, no, it's, it's certainly something that you can look at applying um, to uh, to an existing network. Uh, and um, you know, I know Dom Wild was on yesterday yeah. talking about the various partnerships we have and the uh, technologies um, options that are available. I think um, um, for you know for. Uh, for, yeah, for, for, for me, it's um, uh, critically, uh, you know, critically important that um, the, uh, yeah, the really the customer is looking at the business outcome. It's, uh, the way that we would uh, approach it really is to is to really start from what, what's the business value that you can drive from SDN. You know, what's the uh, what's the difference a, a programmable network can make to the business. So rather than starting at the technology layer and really looking at well, how can we insert this new bright shiny thing into an environment um, where's the where's the real business value and and that might take us down the path of well yeah let's let's pick something like link which is typically in every enterprise uh, it's typically something that you can derive some tangible business value from because it's driving productivity of the of the employees um, or you know it might lead us down a path that says, well, actually there are you know, there, there is some other business process or transaction that would really benefit from having a programmable network. So, for example, you know, um, at, you know at a certain point in a in a in a quarter or a month, you need to you know, provision extra resource for a certain transaction. Direct. That's a you direct know. business benefit. I, exactly. exactly. So, uh, so and is this probably no one answer, but are you finding that the business case is is primarily? IT efficiency driven, or it's business, like that example you just gave, end of quarter. I mean, obviously it's a mix, but it is a mix. many times though, for a technology that's going to have big productivity impacts for the IT department, many organizations will dismiss the sort of softer business benefits. Are you seeing that typically with SDN, or because of the whole move toward cloud and agility and the need for speed, are you seeing that SDN is one of those technologies where people are buying into the softer, I call them softer, but yes. you know what I mean yes. by that? Yes, yes. Ones that oftentimes IT people say, well, we can't, we can't justify it based on that. So what are you seeing there in terms of the business value? So I, I would say, we, I mean, we deliberately, as part of our um, life cycle services approach, uh, we, we really try and force a business and IT discussion to happen. So really we're exposing both the you know, the IT efficiency benefits and the and the business benefits as early on as we can in the in the engagement. So we have um, you know, these transformation experience workshops that we, that we run, and you've heard a number of people mention those, I know. Um, but they're very successful at really bringing IT and the business together to really identify well, where, where's the value here, and um, I, and I think that, that that exposes all of all of the above. And now, you know, in terms of where the, the real business case is. I, I would say typically the big driver is really just to speed up the time to value. You know, right. So in a, in, a, in a legacy network, 
you, know, you might decide something today, but it could take you three weeks or four weeks to actually it, get it to a point of implementation. Yeah, and but in my experience, the, those numbers dwarf the IT benefits, but then they're so big people don't believe them. Yes. So then they say, okay, can we justify it based on the IT benefits? Yes, if we can, then, oh wow, we get all this other huge benefit yeah. that, that is huge and we know it's there, but we're not going to tell the vendor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll get that for free. Yeah. So I want to ask about when the action is service provider. We're in Europe uh, at the Open's next show, which we weren't attending in Paris. Big telco focus, out the out yes. of here. Uh, that's this market. It seems more active on that. Um, what's going on? Where's the action? Is it Internet of Things? Is it over the top? Is it just their business model? What's going on in that market that's really driving the NFV opportunity? Is it just pressure, Apple mobile infrastructure, all of the above? I mean, give us a quick rundown of where the, where the, where the, the hot pain points are, where the opportunities are for these guys. Yeah. Okay, so um, certainly I think really it's, it's, uh, it's, it's the business pressure that these guys are under. I mean, clearly big financial uh, uh, pressure coming from a number of different angles, clear competition in the market over the top uh, for sure. And um, again, you know, I think we're, we've gone through a, a sort of a maturity curve with NFV where you know, probably 18 months ago these, these were projects in the CTO office of a, of a, of a telco. Um, and, Which is uh, code for science project, r and Science project, yeah, exactly. It was a, uh, a technology project. And um, you know, all the components exist now to, to build an NFV infrastructure, an NFV platform. So the, you know, the telcos and the network equipment providers who we, who we partner with too, uh, over the past 18 months have really been playing. They've been determining, you know, based on the Etsy reference architecture, where, where are we going to play? What's this going to look like? And we're now getting to the point where you know, um, uh, companies are seriously starting to look at the deployment schedule. And I think this is, a, this is now a point where they're looking at, well, what's the, what's the ownership experience? What's the service experience that needs to go along with the technology uh, solution? That, uh, There's operational that challenges too. I mean, I was just talking with Dave the other day about just the amount of data that comes out of the telco's customer base, just on pure activity record system, you know, in terms of pure big data. <laughs> I mean, it's massive. I mean, the gesture data, every single piece of interaction with, yes. with the mobile device, for instance, is huge. So, operational, business model, which one is driving it right now? Both, would you say equally 50-50? What's, what's uh, I mean, I just use one example, operational pressure, but um, yeah. uh, what, what do you see there? Which one's driving it most? Is it, is it both, is it 50-50? I think it's, I, I, it's certainly both, but I would say the oper it, it's, it's really the operational pressure that's driving the, um, uh, the acceleration and and uh, you know the, the the speed of implementation. All right, so you, we were talking before you came on that it's been around. All the parts are there within HP to do this. Um, you know, when Seamus was talking about data center care, yes, uh, flex service, all that. And I call it the flex capacitor because it reminds me of that movie, <laughs> Back to the Future. Um, flex capacity has been a big hit. Um, Dave pointed it out on our on our summary yesterday. But what's the equivalent version for uh, uh, service providers? And they went from zero revenue. James' group to billions, cobbling together different offerings, going out and having resonance with the customers. What's the, the similar approach for you guys with service providers? Is there, is there the same kind of product? Is it different products? What's working yeah. and what are you guys focused on? Yeah, so uh, uh, data center care really is the basis from which we'll develop the, the, uh, the ownership experience for, uh, for, the, uh, for the service providers. And, and, and interestingly, in my position, I, I, I sort of have two views of the service provider. I've got the, the telco service provider where, where I'm wearing my network hat. And I would say data center care is really a, a perfect fit for, for them. Um, the only addition that we, or feature set we really need to, to look at is um, around sort of SLA and penalties. It's, you know, that's an area where, where you know, clearly compliance is Huge, important. yeah. It's so, table stakes. So it's table stakes. So it's not just a you know a, a remediation service is not enough. Okay, so that's uh, so really data center care based flex capacity is, is is a big deal there, especially for some of the smaller uh, providers too. Um, and then the other angle I, I look at service providers is more from the service space. So it's the it's the cloud titans, <laughs> you know, the big, the, the big hyperscale guys, guys. Hyperscale guys. Yeah. And, uh, and they have a different set of requirements. You know, they uh, they really are looking at skinning down uh, remediation. They don't, you know, they they've, they've built such resilience into their software that really it, it, they don't care if a server goes down. 
Well, they have a different set of challenges yeah. that, that we have to... Uh, They're services-driven, not so much server-driven. Yes, exactly. They have redundancy built in. Okay, so like, and also they have different user experience, probably, right? The, different user service providers. Uh, what's the hottest area for you guys? What's uh, what's what's growing? What's uh, what's the, what's the hot spots for you guys growth-wise? So uh, hyperscale or telco? Well, it's, I, I mean oh. it's both. I mean um, I think uh, you know for, for us with our partnership with with Foxconn in the in the in the service space, you know, we've really looked to, to provide a credible alternative to you know, white box ODM uh, providers. Um, and you know that's that, that's got a lot of um, uh, you know, traction and interest in the market, and um, that was very uh, you know, very much uh, sort of a, a, um, an exclusively available product for a certain set of customers. And uh, you know clearly um, you know, there's some there, there's some interest I would say from some of the tier two smaller uh, players on, on, on their ability to adopt that uh, that technology but that you know that's that's uh, that's growing you know it's a it's a tough very competitive market but it's one that we're in and we're committed to and then with uh, with NFV it's um, you know it, I mean for us really it's it's a complete greenfield opportunity you know it's, it's replacing technology that that we've never had in our portfolio so replacing you know these proprietary um, network equipment Technologies with with essentially enterprise IT hardened carrier grade enterprise IT. So that's complete greenfield for us. And um, yeah, we did uh, we did some really nice business towards the back end of last year, and and, and we think it will accelerate as you know, as as customers come out of the um, proof of concepts and really start to deploy. Oh, so, I get to, so I like the way you framed it earlier that you start with the, the business outcome and kind of work backwards from there. But when you sit down to do your three-year planning, you, you obviously you're, you're looking at the technology trends, how they're evolving, and how you have to adapt the service experience to exploit the, those technologies to create the business outcomes. You kind of come back from the business outcome then go the other way. My specific question is around security. How, when you sit down and do your three-year plans, how do you look at security and what specific actions have you had to take in order, in order to accommodate, from a service perspective, that experience and how that's changing, and has it changed, and, and if so, how? Uh, so it's a great, uh, a, a great question. Um, so I, I, I would say security in, in all of our customer engagements. Clearly, security is is, is a you know, critical element, and in fact, in, in all of our um, sort of advisory and transformational uh, services, we include security, regardless of the you know, the technology domain or industry vertical approach that we're looking at. You know, we, we really integrate security into that um, uh, into that dialogue and um, yeah, just to ensure that uh, you know our customers really appreciate and understand the, um, you know, the nuances and the, uh, and the technologies that, uh, that are available and clearly as part of the you know the support experience uh, yeah, there's a, a very important security aspect that we, uh, that we have to uh, uh, that we have to maintain so we do we, yeah, we partner very closely with our with our colleagues in enterprise services and in HP software, you know, both of which who have you know, security solutions and um, you know, very, uh, you know, very uh, comprehensive um, uh, solutions for, uh, for our customers. So you know, we can integrate that into our overall support experience. So again, it's you know, one number to call, hide the seams, that's really the, you know, the, the key uh, motivating and you know, customer driver for, for us in technology services. And then really making sure that uh, you know, customers have the right connection points into the rest of the industry. Yeah, so it seems like so much of the world of security is going from this sort of, a, I always say, dig the moat around the castle to, to and everybody talks about the network flattening, east west. Uh, and so security seems to be coming out in as opposed to sort of protecting. So are customers, are they rapidly changing? I mean, it's hard to rapidly change. Age security. It seems like the demands, the information demands, are, are, are moving faster than the ability of the security guys to, to keep up. You know, you, I look back every year in January, December, and say, okay, you got some really great technology things going on, and I've diff never felt, you know, more under attack, more exposed. <laughs> yeah. So I wonder, how are customers dealing with that, with that tension, and are they moving faster? Um, I, 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 certainly, I would say based on our um, uh, customer engagements, I, I believe they are moving, mm -hmm. moving, 
fast. I mean, it's, it's sort of a business essential it's, you know, for many of these customers. So they're being pro proactive about they're, they're it. Being, yeah, they're, they're, being, they're being proactive about it. Um, you know, again, the, you know, there are many alternative solutions on the, you know, on the market. So really our, our job is to help them navigate that, yeah. that path and you know, be the guide uh, for them, um, help advise, and, uh, and, uh, and yeah, I think they're being very, very proactive. Alice, I really appreciate you coming on theCUBE again. Great to see you. I know first day in the morning, Barcelona, because the, the clocks are weird here. They have dinner late, and they stay out late. Uh, a lot of good stuff <laughs> happened, customer events, and got your team here. Um, give me the final word, just quickly summarize what you guys are announcing, the, the quick story for you guys. Get the plug in for what's happening in your group. <laughs> well, I think, uh, as you all have uh, gathered from the theme of the show, I think our, our messaging has been very consistent, actually, over the past couple of years. So, yeah, we're, we're really on the path of execution. Um, you know, for TS um, uh, in Barcelona, really it's about extending data center care. Uh, it's about our infrastructure automation, so our partnership with, uh, with Chef, which I heard you reference uh, in your intro. Um, it's about multi-vendor support and um, you know, the work that we're, that we're doing there really to, you know, to, to support the, the ecosystem, not just the, um, not just, not just the products. And um, you know, just really our, our flexible capacity model, and, and the fact that that's something that's growing, very exciting, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll continue to see that on sure next year. Awesome. Again, great, great stuff with the data center, data center uh, services you guys have, data center care, now going to telcos. Very successful. Congratulations again. We had Seamus on yesterday. Uh, business is good in your, in yes, your department. It is. Customers are moving faster now. It's awesome. This is theCUBE, of course. We're bringing that data, sharing that with you. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back after this short break live from Barcelona. This is theCUBE.